Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with this series on NoSQL. See, in the first video we have talked about what is NoSQL and why there's a need of NoSQL in the world of RDBMS. In fact, we are so happy, right? We have MySQL, Postgres, Oracle Database. So when you have all those things, why there was a need for NoSQL, so we have talked about those things as well. Now, just to clarify, we are living in a world of data, right? So everywhere we have huge amount of data. It's not just about the amount of data we have, which is volume. We have variety of data and we have the speed, the velocity. And these three Vs are actually changing the world. And that's why that we are moving from RDBMS to this NoSQL databases. And then we have talked about multiple types of NoSQL databases, right? We have key value, we have the document type, we have a tabular, and then we have graph as well. So we will be doing those things. We'll be understanding what these things are in this series. Of course, this will be like a crash course, not the entire course. The only problem is the concept NoSQL is very, it's very wide because we have so many types in it. Example, if you talk about key value itself, we can talk about key and value for days. In fact, the implementation, famous implementation for key value is Redis, right? So you can do an entire course on Redis, maybe an entire place on Redis. Uh, for document type, we can use MongoDB. Again, we can do the entire course on that. For the tabular, we can use Cassandra, and then we can do the entire course on that. Same goes for the graph one. In this course, we are going to look at everything so that we'll understand what is NoSQL. We'll understand the differences and how do we implement it, right? Uh, mostly, we can talk about the basics and essentials of all this topic. Now, which platform we are going to use this? Of course, uh, for different types, example, if you want to understand key value, we can install Redis on the system and we can try it out. For uh, document type, we can install MongoDB. And the same thing goes for the other databases, right? Now, what if we can find a platform where you can do everything? And that's where we have data stacks where you can do everything. So what we will do is, uh, so in this video, we'll, try, we'll make sure that you have an account set up ready. Uh, or you have an account ready so that in the next video we can start the implementation. Of course, we'll start with a tabular. Why? We'll talk about it in some time. So to do that, first you have to go to datastacks.com or you can find the link in the description. Use that link because by using that link, you will you, it will make sure that you will get some credit so that you can do transactions. Okay, so first of all, you need an account here. So you can say, uh, you can click on the link and you can say, it will take you to the login page or register page. So make sure that you register here. Very simple registration, you can use GitHub account or Google account. So I'll be using Google. In fact, I already have an account. Uh, the only thing is when you create an account for the first time, it will ask you for some surveys and stuff. You can just complete that. Maybe you can say you're a student or you're working for a company. But the most important thing is it will not ask you for a credit card. Okay, that's important, right? Uh, okay, but what platform we are going to use? So basically, DataStacks provides you a database called AstraDB, which is actually built on Apache Cassandra. Now, Cassandra is an open source uh, database. It is built by Facebook, uh, but then now it is open source. Everyone is uh, contributing there. So AstraDB is actually built on Apache Cassandra, and Cassandra is a tabular database. Now you might be saying, okay, uh, that means using this platform, we can use Tableau, we can use Cassandra. How about the first two, the key value and document type? The best part, it, it also supports key value and document type, so you can, you can do it, right? And plus it also provides you some layers. In fact, we'll talk about those layers later, uh, this target layer where you can use APIs, but yeah, we'll talk about those things later. So I already have an account. I will click on sign in with my Google account. Okay, so even if you see my email ID for this account, I'm not using that email ID for, uh, for anything else. This is just for the video, so don't try to send a mail there. You will not get a response. Okay, so basically it will ask you for some surveys and you can, you know, you can complete this uh, very fast. This is the page of AstraDB and you can see the options. You can see we have a dashboard here and we are on dashboard. And this is a place where you will do all the things, right? You will be using Cassandra for the key value, for document type, and for the tabular. Now, the only problem is you can see uh, we don't have any credits as of now. So in, in, if you create an account and if you don't find a credit, it's actually very easy. You can just ask for the credit from the team and you will get for free, don't worry. So you can go to a live chat and you can ask for the credits. But then if you use the link below, I'm sure you will get $25. And using that $25, you can actually do 
20 million transactions if i'm not wrong and of course for learning purpose and for small project it is not a big issue right uh, you will not go out of that limit yes yeah, so you will get a limit here let, let me know if you're not getting that limit in here so that i can try to find a solution for that otherwise you can of course you can do a live chat and you can get that limit Okay, now once you have this thing, the first thing you will do is you will create a database. And you can see we have an option here. You can click on create database here. So if you want to go for database, you can you have an option there. What if you want to do for streaming? It does support Apache Pulsar behind the scene for the streaming, but we're not going to do that. We are going to focus on the database. So click on create database and here you can enter your database name. I will enter my database name as Talisco. Of course, you can use anything, but let's go for database name as Talisco. And it will also ask you for the key space name. The key space name here means your uh, logical grouping, whatever you're doing. Okay, so we'll talk about key space later, but imagine key space as a logical grouping of whatever data you want to save. Uh, so I will say for this is I will create NoSQL demo as my key space name. Of course, you can create multiple key space. As of now, I'm saying NoSQL demo. And then, uh, so this is a database service, right? So basically you have to keep your database somewhere, some cloud service. Of course, you're not installing on your machine. So it does provide you option of Google Cloud, Amazon Web Service and Azure. Uh, we can choose anything. I'm a big fan of AWS, but we can use Google Cloud as well. And you can select the regions. The only thing is if you are not seeing all these options here, which is locked, again, you can do a live chat and they will give you this option. But for learning purpose, anything works, right? Uh, so we'll create a database. And don't worry, we'll understand what is Cassandra, how things work, how it is different from SQL, what is distributed means. So once we start doing these tutorials, or uh, once we start doing these steps, we will get a lot of different stuff. So just be with me, have some patience. Okay, and you can see I already got a crate, that's great. I think it takes some time for them to, when you create a database, it will give you crates as well. So I got my crate. That is great. It will say pending for some time, but don't worry once after some time it will say active and then you are good to go. Now, once you have all this thing ready, we can start with our first code actually. Now we are going, as I mentioned before, we have three different types, right? We have uh, key value, we have document type and we have tabular. So we initially will start with tabular because Cassandra itself is a tabular database. So how do we do that? So first of all, it is taking some time. You can see this thing pending, but after it is active, you can click on your database. As of now, okay, it says online, that's great. So we are good to go. And we already have our key space. Everything looks good and we can start with our code. Now, where exactly we are going to do this? So, so we will be using this console and this console is called CQL. That's weird, right? We have heard about SQL, and I, I don't prefer to call it SQL, uh, but then we also have CQL, which is Cassandra query language. We are going away from one query language to other query language. Don't worry, it's almost similar. So we'll see what exactly this means in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos, but make sure that you do all the steps before the next video, and you will find the link in the description. Bye-bye.